frankly, if that was your best joke about lightning, all I can say was absolutely shocking. Oh, hi folks. Thanks for joining me. And today's topic is lightning. Hi folks, I'm Richard, G3CWI, and today I'm going to be talking about lightning, something that should be of concern to all portable radio operators. But first I'd like to say that I'm not an expert on this subject, so any advice I give you is advice that's related to just the things that I do, and, they may not, and it may not apply to you. You should check out your own sources of information and find out what works for you. Now, one of the problems that you'll find when you go onto the internet and look for advice on what to do in a situation where lightning has occurred, perhaps uh, slightly unexpectedly, is that you'll find there's lots of conflicting information. And so it's tricky to decide what exactly it is to do. But one of the first things and most obvious things that you need to do is prior to going out, see if lightning's actually forecast. That's a really good way of doing things. One of the problems though is that uh, it's often quite difficult for forecasters to accurately uh, forecast the precise location of lightning events. So when you look at that forecast, the, the uh, further that you're looking in the future for the forecast, the less accurate it's likely to be. Of course that applies to all forecasts, but in particular to lightning events. There are a number of sources that you can use uh, to look at uh, forecasts, obviously the usual weather forecast um, sources that you use. I tend to use an online resource which is uh, quite useful, it's called WQ Radar and it was actually set up by a radio amateur, Jim uh, G3YLA. Uh, he used to be a, uh, a, a television broadcaster, he's a meteorologist by profession. So uh, that, that's certainly something worth looking at, that's a paid for service. But there are a number of services that also provide real time information uh, on lightning strikes that are going on at any particular moment in time. Uh, and again that can give you a feeling for what's actually happening uh, in the future. It's also something you'd actually use when you're out in the hills uh, or out portable operating to see where lightning is. Because lightning uh, can move fairly quickly, uh, obviously the lightning bolts move very quickly, but uh, the, the, the areas where lightning occur can move uh, pretty quickly, so you need to be alert as to what's going to happen. One possibility is to use a, a lightning detector. I've got a, a little lightning detector here. Uh, from a company called Strike Alert and they do a range of detectors. This is a pretty old one and uh, not only does it detect uh, the lightning bursts, it also gives you an indication of how far away they are. I'm not quite sure how that works but uh, anyway it gives you an indication. It has a, a little display that uh, shows you uh, how far away the, the lightning uh, pulses are. So something like that might be worth considering. But really you need to be alert to your own surroundings as well. Something like this will give you a nice pre-warning, um, but it, you, you need to be alert to your own surroundings. If the sky is starting to darken uh, pretty quickly and if you start to see the types of clouds, the, the large cumulonimbus uh, anvil clouds that are associated with uh, thunderstorms in the distance, then it's definitely time to pack up. Well, there's lots of advice uh, from authoritative sources on what to do in the event of being uh, caught in a situation where there's lightning. Uh, I would question how practical some of them are. I mean, for example, the position that you're recommended to adopt by uh, many uh, sources uh, is to crouch like this with your head between your legs. That's not a very comfortable position and I wonder how long you could actually do that. Uh, particularly as uh, for many sources it says that uh, you shouldn't really move until 30 minutes after the last clap of thunder. So you know you're going to be in that position for at least 30 minutes uh, and possibly longer and I don't think that's entirely practical I have to say. A commonly quoted uh, rule for lightning is the 30-30 rule. This says that uh, if there are 30 seconds or less between you seeing a lightning flash and hearing the thunder clap, then you're in danger. And then that when you hear the last thunder clap, you should await for at least 30 minutes before you can assume that the danger has passed. Operating outdoors uh, doing amateur radio is of course a particularly risky set of circumstances. 
uh, we're likely to have an aerial, some sort of a mast as well. And also, we're often not concentrating on our surroundings. We're, we're busy concentrating on making contacts. So it's quite easy for us to not really notice that the weather is changing, and that's certainly happened to me over the years. The, the aerial wire, if you've got, a, say, a long wire antenna or, or maybe a two-metre beam up on a pole, uh, is obviously going to be quite an attractive thing for lightning to strike. Uh, it's above the ground and it's a conductor. Not a great idea at all. So one of the first things that I would tend to do uh, is to knock the mast down and uh, I do that as quickly as possible, even if it means damaging the, uh, the aerials. If there's lightning striking hills around you, you need to act quickly. Uh, there's, a ten there's a tendency then, you know, say you're, uh, you're in a small tent or something like that and the, the rain is beating down and the wind's howling around you, uh, there's a tendency to think, well, I'll stay inside the tent. But of course, you've got the, the aerial wire connected into the tent, your radio's there, various conducting items. So it might be a good idea, actually, to go outside the tent uh, and go some distance away. And the advice that a, a lot of the websites seem to give is that uh, certainly if there's a group of people and you're all crouching down, then you should be at least five metres apart from each other. So maybe you should be five metres away from all your radio equipment. So, I mean, again, is that practical? Are you really going to get out of your tent in the middle of a thunderstorm with the rain lashing down and adopt that crouching position? You might know that it's the best thing to do, yeah, but, you know, is it practical? This is the thing that worries me. While the authoritative sources disagree on some things, there does seem to be a general agreement that lying down during a thunderstorm is not a great idea. Another area in which there's general agreement uh, is that being inside is safer than being outside. Your problem that you have when you're out on, on a hilltop is that you have to transition between being outside and getting inside. And that usually, or may often, involve walking some distance perhaps uh, across open hillside. So it's kind of a difficult one to know uh, uh, how to balance out. Um, without really understanding the risks involved, and, and I certainly don't, uh, without understanding the risks involved, it's hard to determine whether you're better to stand up and walk across maybe to your car 100 meters away, 200 meters away, 500 meters away, or perhaps to a building, or to stay in place. And it's in these areas that the advice on uh, lightning uh, doesn't really help all, all that much, I feel. One piece of good news, of course, is that you're quite unlikely to be struck by lightning. Very few people get struck by lightning each year and the statistics for the UK I'll put up on the screen here, but uh, very few people are struck by lightning. Tragically, every year there are one or two incidents that are reported, and they are widely reported uh, because they're such rare incidents. It seems so incredibly unlucky to be struck by a lightning bolt. So, kind of an odd video really. Uh, I, I can't really give any great advice about what to do in the event of lightning. I think the, the key thing to pick up from the various things that I've said is that you're best to not be out in a situation where lightning is likely. And so if you're going to be operating, say, in the UK uh, in the summer after a, a, a long spell of settled weather, when thunderstorms are forecast, then don't. And don't go out in the open uh, and do your radio operating. It just doesn't make sense. From a radio perspective, we have uh, the ideal early, early warning situation in some cases in that uh, you could actually hear the lightning crashes uh, on the amateur bands, on the shortwave bands in particular. And uh, if it's really close, you can hear them on two meters even. So, uh, you know, you have that, you have that warning, um, but unfortunately the, you can hear crashes from a very long way away. So it doesn't always mean that you're actually in any uh, immediate or imminent danger. If you're out uh, and about and you think lightning is likely, well, A, you should, probably shouldn't have been there, but B, you know, it's, it's a good idea to have one of these apps uh, or use one of these websites on your mobile phone so you can see where lightning strikes are. Uh, and if they're within a few miles of you, maybe 10 miles of you, then it's time to pack up and, and go home. Due to really poor organisational skills today, I haven't brought any beer. 
Now, that is a disaster, really. I've, I've got tea, but no beer. So uh, I'm going to thank, anyway, my beer uh, sponsors. Loads of people buy me beers, which I really do appreciate. Thank you very much for that. And uh, as a kind of, uh, because I haven't got a beer to show you, I, I thought I'd give you a, just a quick tour of the hut. A lot of people have been very curious about the hut that I sit near. So without further ado, let's go inside. Are you ready for a grand tour of the hut? Well, I call it a hut, but actually it has a rather grander title. It's called the pavilion. And uh, let's, take a let's take a little look round. So many a time you've seen me uh, sitting here on the uh, veranda, which is kind of a pleasant place to sit. Although uh, you'll see from the, uh, the roof here, it's not in very good shape. Let's go inside the door. Okay, uh, well here's the first room in the hut, not terribly exciting. Uh, it's got uh, shutters on the windows that you can see there. That's all rather tumbled down and, uh, and falling down. It needs a lot of work and uh, it's certainly not... Uh, some people have asked if I live in the hut. I don't live in the hut. <laughs> okay, well it goes on and on. Let's go through into the next room. Okay, let's tour around here. Now we start to see the hut's rather sad secret, and that is that the back of it has fallen down completely. So it's in a, a very poor state of repair. And uh, <laughs> I certainly won't be living in it. It's got various, uh, various rooms and bits and pieces. It's quite a nice, uh, it makes quite a nice set for, uh, for filming videos. The uh, pavilion is about 100 years old, possibly more than 100 years old, and um, it's obviously in a, in a poor state of repair. The name pavilion is, is a bit of an odd one, um, and various people have speculated that it was actually a cricket pavilion, but given that there's absolutely nowhere to play cricket, or <laughs> even remotely suitable to play cricket anywhere near it, uh, it's uh, hard to imagine why it's got that name. One theory is that it was uh, actually used to be a cricket pavilion and was taken apart and reassembled here. That's kind of an interesting idea uh, and it has some plausibility as behind me there are some really odd looking windows and I did wonder whether they might have at one stage been part of the cricket scoreboard system. Sadly I don't suppose we'll ever get to know the history of the pavilion. Thanks for watching. I'll include some links in the video description to various sources of information and suggestions on what to do in the event of lightning. Please leave your comments below. Do you think any of these, this advice is actually practical, particularly for a radio amateur? Let me know. Cheers!